What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Friday night, September 22nd, 2023. It's about 10.44 p.m. here, California time. And the latest activity, earthquake activity, is a 1.6 here along the west coast. Well, on the opposite side here, along the east coast, we have a tropical storm to chat about. Here's the latest imagery here showing some convection just on the, uh, kind of looks like on the western side of this uh, area of circulation there, Tropical Storm Ophelia is uh, currently just a couple miles per hour short of a hurricane. Now the latest information statement here on Tropical Storm Ophelia shows that it, uh, let's bring up the warnings and the cones here, 70 mile per hour sustained wind, so just shy of a category one hurricane, but I don't think it's going to reach the uh, hurricane level potentially, but I, you never know. have to keep an eye on that, right? Uh, hurricane watch is in effect here, though, just in case this thing does decide to kick back up. We're already seeing some uh, large swells out there and storm surge kicking up across the North Carolina coast. Uh, right now, the main threat, though, going to be in the tropical storm warning in the blue here that is expected to produce quite a bit of rainfall. Here's the U.S. rainfall potential. Uh, South Carolina, it seems like areas just west here along that area of circulation is going to be getting, uh, well, North Carolina, excuse me, is going to be getting quite a bit of uh, significant rainfall from that uh, system tonight. Here's the current peak storm surge forecast. As you can see, uh, possibly two to four feet. Across portions of North Carolina here, stretching up into Virginia as well. Uh, in the blue here, up to about three feet. So definitely kicking things up in terms of the um, potential for flooding as well. You can see uh, in the red here, at least a 40% moderate risk of seeing some flooding from this tropical system here. And it does stretch all the way up to the Washington, D.C. area. Goodness. Quite a bit of rainfall coming in with this system, and uh, just it's definitely uh, one to watch, right? It's it's even though it's not a current you know hurricane, it's still something that we need to be on guard for if you're out there in that area. All right, let's go ahead and check out the latest information here on earthquake activity. Well, slightly elevated movement here across the northern edge of the Pacific Ring of Fire, the Pacific Plate. Uh, also a little bit of activity here across the Kuro Kamachaka, one of the latest earthquakes of 4.5. 108 kilometers deep here into this area of the subduction zone. We did see uh, a couple other deep earthquakes here as well. Throughout the day, including this one here, just off the north coast of Japan, 246 kilometers deep for that 4.0. So watch this area, right? I keep saying to watch the Kuro Kamachaka because we have not seen any major earthquake activity in this subduction zone in quite some time. Uh, there's another deep earthquake there from earlier this morning uh, into uh, potentially the southern edge here of the Kuro Kamachaka or maybe the Japan Trench. Either way, this entire subduction zone, a major hazard in producing some large damaging earthquakes. Uh, throughout the Philippines, of course, there's going to be some smaller earthquake activity. We'll glance at this real quick here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like threes up and down the board here. Uh, not a whole lot of further movement across the Java Trench. Uh, further to the east along the plate boundary. Well, it looks like New Zealand filling in slightly down here. Looks like a couple smaller threes in that area. So let's just double check that and see what we have here for New Zealand. Make sure we got the latest information here 11 hours ago 3.2 um that's just for the uh, felt earthquakes the um let's see what we got here for the drums it will show some smaller quakes if there is indeed any north island not so much uh, but still seeing some activity down here where that six pointer struck a couple days or a few days ago now in the south island new zealand area that is still swarming uh, to this date. That's 923. Of course, they're in the future. Um, yeah, so it almost looks like it's starting to pick up slightly there across the New Zealand area, South Island area, where that six-pointer struck again uh, just a couple days ago. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, return a deeper movement up here in the Tonga area. 
Had a couple of deep earthquakes here in the Tonga Trench. It looks like a little bit of surface activity trying to form up here. Uh, you know, 129 kilometers deep, that's still somewhat deep, but it's shallower than this uh, deeper movement we've seen this morning. Uh, so watch this area potentially along that subduction zone for some further movement. The big island of Hawaii, I don't think we got anything major out there going on. Um, two's out there across Pahala, one earthquake, right smack dab in the crater there of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, let's check out the latest information here on the Kilauea Volcano, which I believe is still, you know, no updates yet on Mauna Loa or Kilauea Volcano. Double check out, well, double check the um, tilt meters out here. See what we got for Kilauea Volcano. Of course, it's been on a, uh, a halt for a little while. One of the cams out there, kind of hard to see in the dark. Doesn't look like anything glowing, at least from that area. Uh, seismograph stations here in the last 24 hours. Uh, there's that one earthquake very close there to the uh, Kilauea Volcano. I think that's the one that's actually at the crater, right smack dab at the Lava Lake region. Uh, tilt meters up here. Let's see what we got. Overall tilt um, gradually climbing once again here ever since the uh, eruption came to halt here a few days ago. Um, but I don't see any major spikes coming up. We'll continue to watch that though for some, uh, you know, for some uh, further activity. Mauna Loa, about the same. Not a whole lot of activity occurring there around that uh, volcano for now. All right, uh, let's get back here to the uh, map on the USGS side. Pacific Northwest, some slight activity again at Mount St. Helens. Got about five earthquakes recorded here in the last 24 hours. It's been a, just an ongoing event here at Mount St. Helens. In fact, let's see what we got. Coming up on and, about 160 earthquakes here in the last 30 days of all magnitudes around the Mount St. Helens region. Uh, it looks like it's tapered off slightly here within the last few days, but of course we'll continue to watch that, uh, see if anything stirs back up. Same for uh, Mount Rainier, not quite the earthquake swarm, but still seeing a little bit of activity out there across that beautiful volcano. In Washington, uh, Northern California here though, a couple smaller quakes this morning. Uh, overall seismic activity out here across the uh, California area looks definitely quiet. Uh, only a handful of smaller quakes throughout the last 24 hours here, so just a little break going on. I don't see any major swarms, any uh, unusual activity to take note of out there in the uh, Southern California area. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here, but uh, let's do go double check. See what we have. As far as earthquake activity goes, doesn't... Uh, I think these were some storms earlier. Uh, but aside from that, a couple smaller earthquakes here on the map. Maybe one earlier this morning as well. But no major earthquake swarm, no unusual activity to note there across Yellowstone. Still seeing some activity out here across the Oklahoma region. And uh, kind of scattered up and down the state here. Some out in Texas as well, hitting the uh, oil fields. Let's see where this one is outside of Snyder. I know these are... Uh, some good oil fields. Let's go over here to the satellite view and see what we got as we zoom in. There's there's one right here, it looks like. Um, potentially, it looks like some tanks right over here. Um, and hard to say. Sometimes these earthquakes occur in areas that may be, I don't know, you know, covered up as far as the vegetation goes. Maybe some older operations. Uh, but either way, that is going to continue for quite some time here in the future. And earthquakes can get rather large here to, you know, potentially to do some damage uh, when it comes to these earthquakes occurring out in the oil fields. Uh, there's one here <coughs> in New Mexico. <coughs> Excuse me. 3.5 uh, earlier this morning. Kind of curious to see where this is at. This is littered with um, quite a few oil fields out here as well. You zoom in, uh, each and every one of these little checkered marks here have little tanks on them and some of them have wastewater disposal facilities and you know it's there's a lot out there. there's thousands upon thousands of uh, oil operations out here across the Permian Basin big time big time oil fields out there 
eastern portion of the country. Pretty quiet aside from that tropical system. One earthquake up here near Madison, Ohio this afternoon outside of Lake Erie. Five kilometers deep. Aside from that, uh, things are, well, looks typical up there across the area of the states for now. Uh, Puerto Rico, not seeing too much activity. Got one earthquake over here around Jamaica. That was from, uh, looks like earlier this evening, a 3.0 near Hope Bay, Jamaica area, 10 kilometers deep. Right around the Caribbean plate here, just the plate boundary. South America is starting to fill in slightly here with quite a few fours. And most of these quakes are originally, are actually uh, somewhat deep here into the Peru Chile Trench. And uh, it looks like it may be building up some strain up here across the area for some uh, larger scale movement. Have to keep an eye on that area of the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, let's see here. Alaska area, of course, did see some movement earlier this morning. And um, yeah, 5.0, and it looks like a little aftershock activity occurring here as well, about 40 kilometers deep underneath this region into the Aleutian Trench. Some activity occurring near the Cook Inlet area as well. A couple twos out there in the last couple hours. Let's see, uh, anything major going on out here? One earth earthquake in the uh, Mongolia region, 4.3. Northern Mongolia, it looks like. I don't know what's going on with this USGS map. Sometimes it loads properly, sometimes it doesn't. It wants to just sit there and look like this. All right, uh, some activity occurring out in eastern Afghanistan as well. Mostly deeper movements out here across the uh, those mountainous regions. Mediterranean, not a whole lot showing up here across the area. Um, twos and threes out here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Some earthquake aftershock activity in Morocco, but... Uh, you know, that's going to continue for a little while. All right, space weather. Been popping with uh, quite a few sea flares and even some M flare activity here in the last 24 hours. Looks like maybe one, two, three. It's hard to say. Maybe some of these, maybe four or five, it looks like, that we've seen here in the last day or so. Coming from a couple active regions. This one up here is just bright starting to uh, flare quite nicely uh, also this region down here so there's a, a couple different areas that is that are facing the earth right now and uh, i think those might be uh, noteworthy to watch for some stronger flaring this area right here i had my hopes up for this region uh, it has been a source of numerous large m flares in the past three days or so uh, but it looks like it's starting to get a little bit disorganized in the uh, magne latest magnetogram image. Uh, but this area up here on the northwestern quadrant of the sun is gaining some steam. Also down here, this is littered with a whole bunch of uh, different colored dots indicating some comp complex structure within that core. So these two are gaining right now. This one here is kind of iffy. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that. The overall threat right now remains elevated. 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 60. And the X flare probability elevated to about 15% chance. So we'll continue to watch that. Expecting a G1 class storm here over the next couple nights. Uh, don't think we're going to see any major impacts. Nothing like we've seen here uh, a few days ago with that G3 class storm. But uh, either way, some potential auroras up there at the higher latitudes. We'll continue to watch uh, and keep an eye on that. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Enjoy your Friday night. Uh, we, we got, uh, we're coming up here soon. Literally about seven, eight days away from the 100,000 subscriber giveaway drawing. Missy Mimi's has been very busy at that. I think she's got 330 entries, maybe a little bit more so far. She's been writing down every single one on a ticket and been putting it in the fishbowl. It's about half full. <laughs> it's about half full uh, as far as that fishbowl goes with, with tickets. So, uh, again, if you want to win some, uh, check out this video that's coming up next after the uh, after this update video. I'll make, uh, make that coming up next here on YouTube. Uh, it'll be the entry, entry drawing. So if you haven't already, make sure you jump in, guys. Win some prizes here at the uh, end of the month. We're going to be doing that drawing live 
10 people will be pulled out of that fishbowl and uh, we'll be giving away some prizes there. Uh, watch the video for details. All right, uh, I think that's about it. Let me double check the trimmer. I didn't get a chance to check that. Um, is there really 128 epicenters here? Goodness, it doesn't look like that much, but it shows 128 uh, within the area outside Seattle. This area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Again, not a, not a huge amount. Definitely not a huge amount of trimmer. Uh, the last big time event was back in, uh, oh, roughly, I think it was about that time period of October of last year where we had um, uh, quite a bit, almost 10,000 epicenters of trimmer within uh, uh, about 20 day time period. Mostly around this date here, October 9th, where we had almost a thousand trimmers in one day. So that's a last large scale event that took place. And um, we'll just continue to watch that. We have seen periods in the past here where it's taken a little break. Uh, but we'll continue to keep an eye on the Cascadia. It's obviously building up some strain uh, for that mex next big mega quake out there. All right, folks. Have a good one. Again, enjoy your Friday night, Saturday uh, coming around the bin. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime. Peace out.